I were hoping that were a skimmer jaw, but I've got a funny feeling it's just a another skimmer. No, I think it's just a perch with its mouth open. And let me tell you, there's millions of, them, of these here at Bank End. In fact, the place is lifting with fish. There he is, look. Is it a perch? It's a perch with his mouth open. Yeah. In fact, no, it's two. Have you ever <laughs> done that before? <laughs> I hope you're rolling on this camera. He's <laughs> caught two. I've caught two. Why wouldn't you? I thought it was a bit of a dead weight, that. <laughs> That? I've got one in mouth and then the other one I'm, I need to just dissect it to make sure that the other one's lassoed round its tail <laughs> there you go because he weren't even a hook he's a slightly bigger one and then other ones in mouth hey you've seen it here first folks listen Danny Wilson has to put two hooks on to catch two fish I only need one I don't think I've ever done that before. I once caught a perch at Bow Beach and I caught one in my feeder. <laughs> I remember that, I remember the thing. Yeah, he were I had a perch wedged in my feeder. Well, if you were going to catch a perch anywhere, two of a perch anywhere, it'd be here, wouldn't it? There's a million of them. There's millions of them. Well, that's a great way to open. That's a great way to... Open today's... Oh. <laughs> Where are we, Mick? Mick and Joe's vlog at... I can only describe it as stunning... We're just on the outskirts of Doncaster, near Finninley. We're at Banken Fisheries. It's known as McCallum's, but locally, to the anglers, it's Bank End. And we've seen the very handsome and charming David this morning. He was just making some sausages, because they <laughs> have their own farm shop. A fantastic cafe where, I have to confess, I had a beautiful bacon egg sandwich. But I don't think I run my own dribbling egg yolk down me uh, lovely clean top. I, what hey, I don't think it might be not last thing we haven't either. Yeah, and um, we also mark the bailiff. It's a gorgeous fishery. Lots of water. And what I like about it, it's quite established. There's some nice big trees and, you know, you feel like you've got your own private swim here. We've almost got us backs to each other, but yet we're next peg. Um, lots of lily pads, plenty of open water to fish on. And I've never actually fished a match here or anything, but I've been here filming, I came here filming years ago with Frankie, Jan and Chelly, and I've also been here filming with Lee as well. Um, and I think you've been here before, Joe, have you? Same, really. I've only ever been here filming. I came here with Paul Yates once. Oh, yeah. And I've been here with Lee a few times. Yeah. On this lake, to be fair. Like, it's always been really good. I think this is called the East Lake, if I'm not uh, mistaken. There's Match Lake, big um, sort of rectangular pond, loads of room on that, tons and tons of carp. Uh, and then you've got, uh, the name escapes me, there's another pond in front of the cafe and building. And um, I don't know if it's public knowledge yet, but they're also just finishing off some massive well, now. lakes at the back of us. Um, David was showing me the plans there, that looks fantastic. But we've just come, Joe, to uh, catch up with each other and catch up with our exploits over the recent times. Do a bit of feeder fishing. Yeah, and get ourselves into the groove for a little bit of uh, late autumn, early winter feeder fishing. And why not come here? But at the moment, there's more perch than you can shake a stick at. I've managed to snare... Uh, I'm going to say two perch on the same... Oh, no, I've managed to snare... Two F1s, completely random, and I've come off a couple of fish. Um, you've had a carp, you, haven't you? I've had a carp, I've had a couple of roach. I don't know what I've got here, it might be a nice roach. Oh, it was a nice roach. Oh. oh. Yeah, so we're... Um, but we haven't found any skimmers yet, have we? No, I think they're patiently waiting just above all these perch for either them to gob it all, or I'm hoping skimmers are going to put them off. But we'll keep winding them in, nonetheless. As I've said before, they're all God's creatures. And perch like that have helped me out of many a sticky situation. Winter league's gone by. So we're not going to scoff at them. So, Mick, what's on the agenda today? Because we've got a new product that we've got to show everyone. Yeah, we've um, we've got a new product that's going out hitting the shots. Well, we're going to say it's a new product. It's a development on a current product. So it's a new, 
you know, a step forward. Um, we don't like to sit back on our laurels at all at New Fish, so we're constantly trying to improve and progress. Uh, and then we've obviously got a little bit of a catch up as to what we've been up to, fishing wise. And then a little bit about what we're going to be doing over the coming months. So, so where are we starting, Mick? Because again, you have been yeah. here, there, and everywhere. Ooh. But this time, in this, oh, why am I keep losing them? Yeah, we were just saying, Joe, that uh, I actually had a, a weekend off, um, did a few chores uh, overdue. Because, of course, real life still happens in between all this glamorous match fishing. Um, because it's been absolutely hectic. I think on the last vlog, I just ran you through the overseas trips and we've been really busy, Barnsley, England, uh, Gloucester Canal and all the rest of it. And uh, and that felt like it were absolutely hectic. In fact, I think I were puffing my cheeks out that day. Well, I've had a three, four days to to come down from the last little uh, flurry of fishing and here we are. Um, do you know what I've just actually done there? Because I'm rattling away. I've chucked up the wrong marker. <laughs> I've got two lovely gaps in between two lovely trees. It all looks that look exactly the same though, doesn't it? They look identical. Um, My dad had a go a minute ago and he's like, where, where am I chucking? I'm like, that tree. He's like, which one is 100? <laughs> yeah, that green one. So... I just um, got to say, everybody, we have got a busy road just over there. So if there's a bit of traffic noise, don't worry about it. We're doing our best. Yeah. Well, I'll be able to talk loud as well, because apparently that's all I ever do, talk loud. But I'm sure nobody's ever complained that they come to me before. In fact, I think they'd be pleased if they come to me. Yeah. So we uh, we left off on the Gloucester. I think the next um, big match for me was the Sono Bates Freedom Master Super League final. We'd obviously had the Super League through the summer, which we'd spoke about. We'd had some great matches and we'd had uh, a rough one at Southfield. Because it'd be fair to say you had um, an indifferent start to that as a team. Yeah, yeah, we, we made, sorry, I certainly, and, and I think three of us had a bad day that day, out of the four of us. Uh, but in general, we had a rough start and we finished off really well, um, winning the last two rounds, one on the Trent and one on Carmel. But, Ringer Bates, um, again, won the actual four-match league. Uh, we were second. That put us... Sorry, I'm telling you lies. We were third because we did get off to a really bad start. Um, DGG was uh, was second. But it was all about getting into the final, which is the top ten teams. And this year, the final was at Staunton Hour Reservoir, where what happens uh, for the Super League, it's a great uh, match because... It officially starts on the Thursday, so it's an open practice down the Thursday. We have, have an official practice down the Friday where we um, hopefully encourage everybody to fish, to try and get bait into the venue. It's a big wild venue. We don't allow nets in those two days to make sure that the fishing's at its best. And then it's two days match um, based on points. And you have 10 teams in the final, four-man team, so a 40 pegger. We had 20 on the... Um, what you call the playground bank, and then 20 on the farm side. Myself, Lee Kerry, Michael Buckwalder, Will Freeman, we had a great uh, couple of practice sessions. We actually, you draw for your uh, practice pegs so that you get, everybody gets an even go at it, everybody knows where they're going. And um, we caught some fish. It was great. We caught uh, an odd bream and we caught lots of roach and we formulated a plan based around roach fishing. Um, which ordinarily was based around worms uh, and ground bait and window feeders. And because it's a two-day event over four anglers, it's probably important to remember and, and remind everybody that you can't, you can't win it on one day. It's a two-day. So that's four anglers over two days. It's eight sections. So you can take a bit of rough and smooth, and what you have to do is play the percentages. And so what we did, we just said... Just keep winding fish back and the, the weights will look after themselves. You don't have to win every section to win this um, to win this event. Anyway, off we went. Um, I was... Hey Mick, I've got to stop you. Have you got one? No, there's a car. Just come cruising by there. It's got to be £20. It's just like... Is it really? The surface just here. Massive. How big is it? It's got to be £20. Massive. 
Is it coming my way? It's just here. Just if I just plunk my feet here, I'll spook it here. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna stalk it, Joe. It's just there. I just. It might not be very well actually. I've just tried to bonk him on the head and he hasn't moved. <laughs> <laughs> He's not having it. Yeah, it's um, because it's quite deep here. It's it's quite clear, isn't it? We've seen loads of fish topping on the surface. Oh, good, I think yeah. eighty percent of fish in the lake, apart from these perch, um, are all in shallow water. You know, I was in in surface layers. We've seen loads of fish cratching. Uh, I've had loads of liners. Hitting fish on way down. If it does get to the bottom, and you're not lucky enough to snare an F1, you catch one of these. But we'll keep plugging on and uh, keep feeding and try and draw some better fish in. Is he there? Have you got him? No, he's, he's just cruised off now. Say what I've got. I've got a robin that keeps landing on my side tray, which is nice. Lucky robin. Oh, I'm not going to tell you he landed on my rod earlier, which is not usually a good sign because it means you're not striking enough. However, he's gone now because. I keep getting these perch in F1, so so yeah, we um, off we went. Um, I drew reasonably well on the first day. I had what did I weigh? Twenty. I think it was about twenty pound of um, of mainly roach. Our second in section, Sean Cameron actually was to me right. Fished a great match. He won the section. Great angler, Sean, good friend of mine. And we had a great day. Michael Buckwalder won the match. He fished an absolute blinder. And it was obvious that the team approach was right. And But we were only just in front. And um, off it went to day two. Don't have to really change much. And um, I think it's well publicised. We actually had a great day on the second day. It was a bit nip and tuck because there were Michael Drew halfway up the farm and that weren't particularly a great peg, but he ever consistent, uh, got his points. I drew a screamer, which was the end peg on uh, what I call the playground side. Uh, I won my section with 29 pound of roach. Had a great day's fishing. Just winding roach back all day, lovely net of fish. And we lifted the trophy. And So the, the so team had... came to form just the right time then? Absolutely. Well, we had... We had um, we had a great match. Really pleased to win that. We've had two of the Super League finals now. Ringers won the first one. We've won the second one, and it's a great format. And we are looking forward to next year. The next year's finals on St Albans Lakes. Oh, is it? Yeah, down um, Hertfordshire, I believe that is. Um, I've only ever been once myself, and that's the beauty of choosing a venue like um, St Albans. It's like we did last year with Rudyard, it's nobody's local water sort of thing. You know, um, we have some teams that are consistently good in the in the league. Uh, none of those teams, you know, you've got DGG, you've got Ringers, you've got ourselves, you've got the Newfish team, Dan Busters, who've been third and fourth the last two years. They don't know it. So what it means is we all have to travel away, we all have to practice, and we all start off on an even keel, and it, it makes you work hard because you've got to sort it out. And I'm really looking forward to that one. That'd be good, that. Yeah. Um, so I'll that tell you what, there is at Albans. There's some wild cards, isn't there? There's oh, big fish, there's small fish, there's all sorts there. I think Rob Wooten had a carp in a feeder masters qualifier there this year. Was that thirty pound? Yeah. Um, big catfish and all sorts. Big catfish, or some pegs have got lots of small, medium, and sort of quite big catfish in. I think Tony Kerr had seven in one match. Uh, but then the skimmers, then there's the, obviously the carp lake, as in what I call more of a commercial lake, which is mainly carp and bream. Uh, the big wild open lake, which is a bit like this actually. Imagine putting a few islands in the middle of this. That's what the the natural lake uh, is like. So that'll be that'll be fantastic. Excuse me. And then I think we had a couple of weekends off after that because obviously that was. A massive effort after all that in the summer and going abroad and then and then that so the next trip after that was the feeder masters the uh, grand final so 
Tamar, everybody knows where the final for that is. We work hard to get through there. Obviously, myself, Lee, my brother Darren, we have to work hard because we run the event. There's lots to do. We put on a massive show, marquees, all the pegging. Lee does loads of work behind the scenes. We organise it. Oh, it's a great one, isn't it? Oh, it's a great weekend. Um, we absolutely love it. And you uh, you joined us there this year, Joe, didn't you? Certainly did, yeah. We had a great week. A few, uh, few parts of the local brew. Atlantic, Atlantic, can't beat it. Atlantic Pale Ale. Do you know what I've done here, Mick? Just snuck two feederfuls next to these pads. Oh, you're creeping up on him, are you? I keep flicking a few maggots off at the end of these. I don't know why, but I, don't know, I just can't help myself. Just looks good to me. So obviously that is a culmination of not only your angling work, but obviously the work that, we, that you do behind the scenes in organisation and... Yeah, there's... It, it's, what your brother Darren does, what Lee does. That's right. Even even my dad gets involved. And, you know, not, not that it matters um, to anybody else. All we want is a great final, but there is quite a lot of work goes off behind the scenes and uh, preparation for, for all that. The physical stuff, you know. Um, creating pegs, creating labels for pegs, creating, getting the banners sorted, organising the trophies, booking, like I said, the barbecue, booking the uh, the accommodation, getting the marquee ready, all that sort of thing. It all takes time. But we've been doing it a long time now, and each year we just try and, you know, adjust what needs, what needs changing and rolling out what has become a great format. Obviously, we shared a chalet, which was myself, you, Lee Kerry, my dad, Darren, and we had a great week, didn't we? Plenty you know, of fruit cake. A lot, a lot of fruit cake. I think parking, we... I got introduced to parking. Ah, I'm beginning to think that's a South Yorkshire thing, parking. Um, comes around this time of year, it's a wholesome uh, cake. Some people might call it Jamaica cake, ginger cake, but I think the difference is it's um, got a bit of porridge in it. So it sticks to your ribs proper at winter and keeps you warm. <laughs> I think that's the uh, aim of it. And, um, yeah. And what we do with that, very similar to uh, the Super League. Lee and I go down on the Tuesday, um, get there Tuesday night, uh, afternoon, weigh up the venue, look at the levels, assess where the pegs are going to be. So we roughed it out on the Tuesday, sprayed a few pegs. The fantastic elk that we get from South West Lakes, um, they were in with the strimmers, cutting in new pegs where we had to fit them in. And because um, when the water's high, you have to fish sort of on the tree line and things like that. You can't just get down on the gravel and put your pegs, you know, evenly. So they were brilliant. Gary there did us, did us proud. And uh, Ashley, the, the manager, facilitated everything. And off we went, and Wednesday we pegged it out, had a little fish on the Wednesday afternoon. And as usual, Tamar's full of fish, and skimmers, and roach, and an odd bream kicking around, that's a nice roach. Um, it's an amazing venue, Mick, isn't it, Tamar, for them who don't have never been? It's just black with fish, I can't describe it any other way. Um, and what I like about it is that you can catch all manner of species, however you really want to fish. There's bites, so if you want to sit out for an odd bream, you will do. I don't think it's the right way to compete in a match. If you want to fish really short, there's a million perch in there. You'll catch small roach there. The, I think spe skimmers are the species that you need to catch, but if you're not on a great skimmer peg, you have to look at the roach, and there's a lot of them. Now, this year, we're slightly different, because the roach... I think were last year's roach and they were quite small and they were bullying out the better roach or should I say they were getting to the bait first yeah so you had to get your thinking cap on um I think everybody knows what happened on the feeder masters there were lots of skimmers caught and pellet feeder played a big part this year um, yeah that was that, quite interesting wasn't it then? yeah that's no secret so I believe personally because I went down for Westies festival in June and we caught fish and we caught them on methods and pellet feeders. And I think it's because the water's clear, Joe. Yeah. They won't settle. They won't settle down on worms and um, get their heads down. So you've actually almost got to 
pinch every fish because I think they follow the bait down, they grab the bait, and the best way to do that is on a short hook length with a method or pellet style feeder, and they go down and they grab the bait, and you, you snare them more than you do catch them in a conventional style like what we're trying to do today. A um, couple of great days practice, we had a official practice match on the Friday, um, I drew on the black and white post, which is on the Devon bank, reasonable area, fished a pellet feeder and I caught uh, 30, I think it was 34 pounds of skimmers, had a great day and that was second in match, Adam Wakelin won it from the gorse bush, brilliant day, it was a great start to the weekend, uh, come the day of the race, um, I drew a bit further up on the Devon bank, past the gorse bush and onto where the bird hide is, now there it's, that's the sort of, there's a hump, it's yeah. a big natural shallow bank but in all fairness i were actually just to the left of it so I, i'd got the depth of water that i needed Whoa. It, it's amazing look at that <laughs> carp there um the one thing i'll say about Tam <laughs> tamar he's, he's gone for it the one thing i'll say about tamar is that to get it right finding the right depth is it's imperative so you got to get a count. Now that changes every year. So we're using on, like a one ounce bomb to find your depth. Yeah. So I just get a normal square one ounce bomb, and I count in seconds: one thousand, two thousand, three thousand. This is a source of much debate among you feeder men, isn't it? Yeah, I, Joe. I think I think what people have got to remember, because you can be as scientific as you want. I've even seen people doing theses on it uh, with trajectories and uh, bomb speed and all sorts of fandangle science. The most important thing, and remember this as an angler, sort it out for yourself. And what yeah, I mean be consistent by that is, for yourself. Um, I count 1,000, 2,000, you can count one elephant, two elephant, one banana, two, all that nonsense. Tommy Pickering goes one, two, three, four, five, like that, and he'll get 20 and I'll get seven. <laughs> um, as long as I know that my seven is where the fish are feeding, I think that's the most important thing to remember don't try and um, turn it into a science, it's not. And it's about the contours of the lake. So I'll just try and work out where it is. And I had a reasonable depth, which I think, uh, as I remember, around a seven, where I felt that were deep enough to catch skimmers um, and a little bit too deep for roach, because then that just singles out the right size fish. Um, and I weren't particularly happy with my draw. I thought I were too high, because I thought the gorse bush because you get one day on each bank, yeah. it's probably worth mentioning. So you only get one chance to draw certain areas um, because the following day you have to rotate banks. And I'd be going on to the... Because comp. traditionally the Devon bank throws up skimmers and the other bank throws up a bit of a mixture, doesn't it? Uh, absolutely, yes. It's more varied on the other bank. You could be roach fishing. And um, anyway, my day went quite well. Um, I, caught, I, I fed quite heavily at the start and left that and caught a few roach and fed the net. I got Michael Buckwalder, um, two to me right, they were Eddie, Eddie Bride and then, then uh, Bud and he started fishing for roach. He finished up with 357 <laughs> fish for... Like a windmill, isn't he? 33 pound. Um, I took the most considered and steady approach and I think I had 31, nearly 32 pound I think it was. Um, of mainly skimmers, I caught a couple of better fish and I thought, well, that's a great start. That put me fifth on the day, um, which was, I suppose, from what I considered to be not the best peg I could have drawn, was obviously a good result. And it turned out, and this is really important to, to mention, even though I thought it wasn't a great peg, it clearly was, because it, it produced 31 pound, 12 or whatever it was. So, it was good enough, weren't it? All I had to do was draw well the second day and, and, uh, and I'd be fine. Travelling partner and uh, Mr Feeder Master himself, Lee Kerritt, um, he drew on, uh, where were he? He were over on the Cornwall bank, so we were on opposite sides, which we kind of like because it helps us to glean more information. And Lee were on peg, let me get this right, he were early numbers, five at four. Five, he was five, on, five. skimmer point. Just give him a point, yeah. So he were happy with that, but it's a good peg, but usually you want it on the second day. Uh, you want to be on Devonbank first day. And um, 
but he come back with thirty pound. So we were happy campers, uh, is the truth. And um, I think Lee were top ten, as I remember. Might have been eighth, ninth, and I were fifth. So we sat, we sat pretty. Second day comes. Happy lodge, wasn't it? Very. Yeah, we got cake coming out of his ears. We went for a pint. We had a steak, and um, jobs were good. Second day, obviously, I know I'm going on to the Cornwall Bank, and I drew peg. 10. I think I tried to hide my disappointment. I'm not sure if I did. Yeah, a bit no man's land that, isn't it? Yeah, it's not the quarry and it's not skimmer point. I will say it's just out of Roach Bay. It's great, isn't it, Termite? It's got all these yeah, different it's got names. names I hope, it? I hope. Sea drill point, there's no sea drill there. No, no, I think the sea drill rotted away 30 years ago. Um, this actually feels like it's gone over its back, but we'll see. Skimmer? No, no, it's um, it took a bit of line off me. I think it could be another F1. Um, yeah, it were no man's land. But listen, thirty-two pound in net, and I'm away. Lee drew one down from the gorse bush. I thought brilliant. He can catch him from there. They take some beating, but the gorse bush had been better um, leading up to it. So off we went, job to do, and I fed me long line for skimmers, started short for roach, um, did a slightly better job of it than I'd done the day before, more in tune. And I think I had 50 roach in the first hour, but they were small, they were very small. And I know I'd got to catch skimmers. Hi, hi. What about him? What we got, mate? I don't tell you till I've got it net, because he... Aye, aye. He knows where it, um, the where, F1? where it pads are. It's not an F1. It's a bit of a creature. Oh, I'll tell you what, he's got his second wind, he has. Oh, no, Joe. No. Tell you what that were, a Tamar perch. Was it really? I'm get, I'll get two pound. I think I were a bit aggressive with it. Um, massive perch. Plonker. Um, anyway, I caught some skimmers, caught a few more roach, and I had to keep rotating and resting it. And I finished up with 20, a big 26. I did well from the area. I was quite happy with that. In fact, on that bank, I did, I did ever so well. And that put me uh, total weight enough to put me sixth. Six in the match, and from what I considered to be two good but not amazing draws, I had a two. Yeah, back. I should imagine you were quite happy with that. Yeah, nice prize, love the trophy. But the most important thing was that my mate Lee Kerry, the one and only previous double feeder master champion, did what he does, caught himself 30 odd pound of skimmers, fishing an absolute blinder, and I'm sure. He'll have done his own information and video on that, so look out for uh, Lee's videos because he'll tell you a lot better than I did about how he then became, for the first time ever, triple Feeder Master Champion. Which, what we're saying about that, Joe, that's an achievement, isn't it? What, triple Feeder Master? Triple Feeder Master. Unbelievable, yeah. Yeah. And it, it kind of, as soon as he drew in the morning, we were all like, well, he's done it. And it's not as easy as that. No, but... But he look, makes it look as easy as... <laughs> Lee don't make mistakes, does he? He, he don't um, make mistakes. You can't give him an inch because he'll take a mile from you. And um, we all fancied him. And he made it happen. And so, fair play to him. Brilliant result. Really chuffed for him. No, he's Shame incredible. it weren't an hat trick. But he did let Zach Williams in the year before. Who, I need to mention, came second. Yeah. So, Zach's had a first and a second in two years. Yeah, Zach, Zach pushed Lee all the way this year, didn't he? He did. It were, uh, I don't think anybody knew right until the weigh-in, uh, Joe, what, who were actually going to win, did they? No, I went and um, saw the last 20 minutes of the match and I just got behind Lee and Lee shouts to me because the wind is horrendous. Yeah. And he's like, how's it going, how's it going? And I said, I need the best 20 minutes of your life out of you, Lee. Because I knew it was so close to him and Zach. Uh -huh. No pressure then? No. 
And uh, you know what Lee's like? You give him any sort of encouragement and he doubles down, doesn't he? He's like, oh, right, he's I'm your the man. man for this. He's your man for that game. We had to doubt. Yeah, I was really, I was really pleased. Um, Lee's a brilliant angler. Obviously, the amount of work he puts into um, feeder masters is incredible. Not only does he run it to what I can consider to be probably the best anybody runs any matches. There's nobody better at running matches than he is. He then puts his clipboard down and then goes and wins. Yeah, he goes and, goes I mean, and wins the match. I've all on running a match and I've all on winning uh, an event like that. To do both at the same time is incredible. So, really pleased for him. Deserved champion. And, you know, I did say to him, if he'd have won it three times up bounds, I would have let him keep the trophy. Um, however, he's got a lovely, um, nice silver goblet to uh, remember it by. And I'm sure he'll look at that and wonder if he'd not let Zach in. And he had a one and that trick. He could have had something to make his shelf sag a bit bigger with a, a Feeder Masters trophy. But nonetheless, so... Um, I suppose there's only one thing left to say about Feeder Masters, which, you know, it has been said uh, on Feeder Masters' page, and it was said at the final itself. It was a bit of an end of an era, which um, is a bit sad, really, because this year saw the last of the Press Innovations backed Feeder Masters. We've had a great, we've had a great history with them. They've sponsored us from the outset. They've been great partners, um, but. Things change, and the powers that be, um, you know, up in the upper echelons of Wall Street, and the investors behind the rather outdoors group have sort of decided that it's not quite right going forward. So we've got nothing but praise and thanks for Press Innovations for supporting the event from its inception back in 2016 when I sat down with Scott Jeans. That were um, a leap of faith for them, for something that was brand new and unproven. Uh, continued by all the people that were involved with pressing through that journey and finishing off with Robbie Griffiths and Adam Rumble. So a big thanks to them. Um, end of an era. And let's yeah, it's the end of an era. But exciting times coming up. We've got a few people who are talking to us about potential partnerships. So we're really interested in that. That's happening right now. And we look forward to Feeder Masters 2024 with uh, another great year and what will certainly be a new partner for us. So, yeah, on to that one. So, obviously, there was no rest for the wicked because as soon as Tamar was over, Feed of King. Yeah, but I'm just going to go backwards a little bit oh, there. Oh, God, yeah. Because... You had even more to consider. I wasn't the only one fishing... Uh, when we were in Cornwall, what a Joe? You <laughs> snuck off one evening while we were at Tamar. Tell us about that, because I think that's spawned a new, uh, a new little chapter in your angling, hasn't it? Yeah, well, obviously I went in the summer on holiday to the seaside, did a bit of uh, low fishing, caught some bass, only little ones, but kind of got me all excited. And uh, so me being me, I. Go head first into these things, learn everything I can about them. And I know that my mate Andy Power likes to do a bit of that. So we arranged a bass in time while, while we were down there. And although we didn't catch any, it, um, yeah, it got me all excited about it. It's just ace, it? the sea's ace, isn't it? Oh, especially around that, um, I mean, that's the Atlantic, isn't it? And, the, oh. the, the Devon and North Cornwall course is, is wild. In fact, I'm saying it's that wild, Joe. You've got to be careful. It doesn't fill your way. There's chest waders up on you. What? Almost like, almost like what happened to me. Did you... You're supposed to swim with the water on the outside of the waders, aren't so, you? So, one thing I, I will say, I wouldn't want to fall in. No. It was like a riptide where we were fishing and it were... Uh, you feel force, can't you? It's just... It's one of the most powerful things, powerful things on the planet, isn't it? Yeah. And, Wind, um, rain. Obviously, we went there and I didn't catch anything, but it soaked the, started the fire. And I went out last week with my good friend, Pem Wrighton, who works for Daiwa. And uh, we had a great trip down on the south coast. Whereabouts did you fish, Joe? Near Portsmouth. Okay. I couldn't even tell you where we were. 
All I know is I, I drove to near Portsmouth. Um, it's a bit of something different. And I caught two lovely bass on Lowe's. Yeah, how big was that one? You showed me a picture. How big was that fish? Well, we measured it. It was 50 centimetres, so... I don't know. Four and a half, five pound? Beautiful. Fat as butter it was. So, I didn't, I didn't ask you this. Is that an edible size? Is that? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, if you if you were that way inclined, that would have been uh, some lovely eating, that. If I were going to a restaurant, I'd be paying a premium for a... Yeah, my dad says you'd... My dad said that. He says you'd pay a fortune for a fish like that. But that, obviously, it's not for me, that, but... You slipped him back to fight another day. But the interesting thing was, mate, and it's obviously me being totally naive to sea fishing, how fast things happen in the sea is in regards to the tide. Yeah. Because where I caught my biggest one, there was no water 10 minutes before I caught that. Never. There was no water. So they, they come on in, come in on the tide. Obviously the, the, oh, look at that, look, look at that rod, golden. They Here's come in on the tide and obviously the little fish, the sand eels or whatever it is they're eating, got pushed in with the tide or just the bass pushing him in, I guess. And we found them at this little river Brain into all these little bait fish, and I've just lobbed my lure in and caught one straight away. It was unbelievable. Brilliant. Did they pull? Oh, mate. Sea fish are different, aren't they? They just. I've never. It's. I've never done it, and I keep saying I'll do it, but there's a lot of commercials and there's a lot of yeah, rivers there's a lot and of there's a lot of there? normal fishing I want to do for, and I just don't have the time, which is a poor excuse, really. So yeah. So that that was that was brilliant, and it, oh, I just can't wait to go again. I, so you're into that now, then? Oh, I said to I said to Pam, I says if I live down here, my missus would be filing for divorce. I know she would. She'd be looking for you with an head torch on beach. <laughs> so yeah, so that's uh, a bit of a new passion of mine now, I reckon. Yeah. To go yeah. with everything else that's not match fishing related that I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're just a, uh, an all rounder, aren't you? Good at rounders, my mate used to say. Just he like said, what? Fishing. He said, it's an all-rounder. He said, oh, I thought you said they were good at rounders. He said, I haven't played that for years. That's just a little tribute to my mate, John Holt, because <laughs> he always used to make me laugh. Um, God rest his soul. So, yes, uh, as you rightly said. Feed the king. we came back from Tamar on... The big weekend. Monday. <laughs> Wednesday, we went for the Feed the King practice match, which I've mentioned for a reason, because... We all fish Southfield, we all know it. I fish it regular. But there's always something to learn in the in fishing. And I went on the practice match and I actually caught better fish, bigger fish. And the approach that I used, which it's all well documented because I think we've done two videos. Um, one about the Feeder King, which is on our YouTube channel. Yeah, if you, so have if seen you want that, to watch, the... don't forget to subscribe. Yeah, while, you, while you're watching, subscribe. Yeah, yeah. press that button. Press that button. If you want to see great content from uh, us too, and the rest of our team. So there's a video on there. It's basically showing you the whole match and some live footage. There's also then I did went back a few days after the final and did um, ten tips about Southfield. But I just learnt on that practice match that if you weren't on the small fish, the skimmers. They're like 10 to 10 ounce to a pound and a half, which you need to be quite active with. Flipping in bait, you know, short casts. If you were on bigger fish, you had to be a bit more patient. And that's what happened to me on the Wednesday. So we went on the Saturday for the final. So it's the new Fish Feeder King final, which we're dead proud to sponsor. Uh, I'd qualified earlier in the year, along with uh, Lee Kerry. So we'd had a great week at Tamar where Lee and I club our, um, we, you know, we pull our info together, we work together as a team, and we did the same. We had a considered approach at Southfield. Lee started off on skimmer, so he went down that avenue, and I started off on better fish, so I followed that and pursued that little line of inquiry. Um, needless to say, I think I've gone on about it long enough and enough on social media, but I lifted the trophy, which, I'm not sure if I've said this, it really means a lot to me. Um, the lads at Southfield, Andy and Mick are brilliant. They run a great competition. And 
being a sponsor um, to an event that's local to us means a lot to me. The fact that they've sort of chosen us as their partners and we've been able to go along with them. So I don't know what this is, it doesn't feel right. Um, Lovely, innit, mate? How that? And just be part of their journey and support a great event. They work hey, hard. What's going on here? I'm not really sure. I was going to stand up so I didn't get lily padded up. Um, I'm not sure what that is, Joe. After la after the last fishes, I needed me encyclopedia of fish spotting because I didn't know what I got last time and it was a big perch. There, we cleared it. some lily lily pads here, but they're right in my line of fire. So I'm just going to take my time with this. So I don't want to look like a, another fool with a feeder swinging around my neck and a perch swimming off laughing at me. And um, yeah, the, it's a brilliant competition. And to lift that trophy, I mean, just to be really sad, that trophy is an absolute beauty. I think it's the one that Lee Kerry's wife, because he's won it twice, said that she'd actually wouldn't mind keeping. And um, that trophy, I actually drew that on the back of a notepad. Back of a fag packet? The back of a fag packet. I'm going to say that, actually, but... I think this is a... Uh... You've not got that perch on again, have you? No, I'll tell you what I've got. I've got some tint dorsal fin. There's a lot of fish being a little bit wappy today. Wappy, is that a word, wappy? There it is, look. Is it an it's F1? A... Yeah, small F1. Um, but it's not up to its mouth, Joe, because I think they're flying about, the water's clear. They don't really want to be on bottom, do they? We've had no. millions of indications and lines and stuff. Yeah, so that trophy means a lot to me, and it's currently sat on my mantelpiece, which I'm dead chuffed about. And, like I said, I'm proud of it, because I, I drew it out like that, and we've got a great company that makes some trophies for us, and they actually made it to our design, so pleased with that one. Nice big uh, pickup. Yeah, 10 grand, that's very nice, isn't it? Yeah, not to be sniffed at. And I must also mention the ever-brilliant Lee Kerry, because Lee came second. So... I just pipped him, which I feel quite bad about because no, that would have made Lee triple feeder master and triple feeder king. However, it's only a matter of when, not if. And I'm sure Lee will win it again and make himself the first person to ever win both titles three times. Dead chuffed, pleased with that. So that kind of... Were... Yeah, great. And we can, we can relax a bit. But in the meantime, since we did our last vlog, there were a competition sat in the background, which was on, but not on, because it weren't confirmed. Because we were waiting for... That's just pulled my rod in, that one, Joe. Um, we were waiting for confirmations for some competing teams, which was the newly formed Euro Feeder Cup, which were going to happen at Barston. Anyway, that, that has happened. So we weren't actually completely sure that that were going to happen so I thought that then was time to relax so we did a bit of other fishing um, and I'd got myself a couple of tickets for Riverfest that were on oh one just of, well, because I'd, you needed something else to fish yeah just uh, just when you th when you thought it couldn't get any worse um, am I right in saying I've probably got that out of out of sync because I, I went on the... That was just before Feeder Masters, wasn't it, that? The final, it was, yeah, yeah. So I'd fished a qualifier on Tidal, which is... I think I've said it before, it's my favourite place on planet. Um, another little F1, Joey, nearly pulled my rod in, look. Look at him. And I drew upstream at Dunham. Not drawn there for years. Um, it was a big tide, split tide, so the tide... We're coming up while we were while we started, and it turned and went backwards. I'm channeling me in a book, Michael Buckwalder here, by the way. You what? Sorry. I'm channeling me in a book, Michael Buckwalder here. <laughs> I um, had fantastic days fishing. I weighed 46 pounds, and I caught a load of pommies, silver bream, gusters, call them what you want. Um, I had six big skimmers. Some massive roach. I had a roach about a pound and a half. The great yeah, days fishing. Yeah, that was amazing. Fishing. That fish, that wasn't it? 
it were unbelievable. Um, and I, w I actually won the qualifier. Great match, which put me in the Riverfest final just because I didn't have enough to do, which, as you rightly said, was the week before um, Feeder Masters. <laughs> just because you didn't have, just because you needed another big match. Yeah, just squeeze it in. Um, who wants to be at home doing gardening when you can go fishing? <laughs> Went down there and I drew peg three up in Nelson Field. Um, sorry, in Ferry Field. I had 15 pound odd of dace on a feeder. Great days fishing. Probably would have caught a little bit more if I could have fished my match again. Started on ground bait and casters and emp and I wish I'd just started on a maggot feeder. Um, I just fish feeder because it's not a great pole peg. Uh, the second day, I drew a reasonable peg and I thought, what? Oh, not not two pegs that I could have won it from, um, but I drew down on the bottom of the rack as it starts to shell up. A little bit low, I will say, but I just thought I could probably catch 20 odd pound of roach there. But I'll be honest with you, I got it completely wrong. I was too aggressive thinking that I had to feed my way through all these small days. Oh, so daisies, I better watch my rod as well, aren't I? Um, you pull your rod in? Yeah, yeah, I would, I would just turn into you. Um, good job the old yoga rest stopped it, John. Yeah, fact, fence I, the all needs. He, um, yeah, I was too aggressive, trying to feed through what I thought were days that wouldn't be enough and catch big, big roach, and I overfed it, and I, I failed miserably, really. I got a good hiding from Alistair Ogilvy, who was a brilliant river angler. Uh, he just ticked along in a very conservative style and caught his uh, target weight. And if I had a fish like that, I might have caught similar to him. Um, and I probably would have put myself in the frame. As it happened, I think I were three or four places out of the money. Really annoying. Um, Kyle Hartley won the match. I'd paired up with Tom Norton uh, on that match. Brilliant angler, recently signed for Drennan. Smashing lad. Um, and he fished two brilliant matches. And I think he was ninth. Um, so we shared a nice pick up there, and, but I didn't really contribute to that one, if I'm honest. Um, so a bit disappointing, really. Fished a good match up first day, bad match up second day. Missed out on getting in the frame, but should should have should have done better. That were a cracking F1, that. Was that an F1? Yeah. Yeah, you'd have thought it were a cartwheat to pull my rod in. Double white maggot, Joe, I think. It's quite interesting, Mick, because I thought, what I'm going to do, I'm going to mess about short for a little bit, just have a prat about and leave my peg out there. Yeah. And since I've done that, it's bubbling and all sorts out there now. Oh, you could you could have some skimmers come in. Well, I hope so. Well, I've, I've put all them worms I've chopped, I've actually fed them all, and that seems to have made the difference. Yeah, so that were, that were great, and then... We'd done that, and it was definitely time to relax. But we knew that we had this Barston competition coming. Um, I fished a winter league for Barnsley on Stanley Canal at Thorn a couple of weeks ago. Just um, drew a cracking peg there, so good tell her we're on a roll. Everywhere I go down, I've, everywhere I see it, I've kept drawing good pegs. I drew for the team because I were on form. Of course you did. <laughs> Drew his MPEG, which it's all it's the old-fashioned style in our winter league. Basically, if you're on the MPEG, all your team it's like it, you're all in the same position in the in the um, in, the, in section. the section. So where there was ends, they were literally MPEGs. So I think um, Simon were at End at Road, I were on End of Whitewell Bridge. Uh, Alan weren't best pleased with me. He drew on the flats, but he wasn't... Uh, it's, he, sorry, he was the end, but he didn't particularly like that peg. However, he snurtled out a £15 of roach, because um, he's brilliant. Snurtled? Snurtled. Snurtled them out. There's a word for you. There's a word. You have to excuse me chopping. Um, uh, we won the team, put us back on track, because that was second one, and the air and colder, we'd not fared too well. Um, but we're back on track with that. And then it were down to Barston for the the first ever Euro Feeder Cup. Well, I think, mate, before we talk about the Euro Feeder Cup... Yes. Shall we have a look at that new product that we've teased? Yeah. Have Why a little not? Look? Let's, uh, let's show the viewers what we've got. 
Okay, Mick, so you, we've teased them all about some new products. Yeah, uh, because obviously we don't just fish Joe, do we? We don't just fish we don't just sit here it's talking to the camera saying, we've fished this match, we've been to that match, I've been bass fishing, I've been doing this. <laughs> no, 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 we've, uh, we've still got work to do, haven't we? Yeah. And this is a little bit of work that we've been, that we've been doing. Obviously, uh, the new fish, Taurus Rollers, have been out for quite a while, and I think... It's very popular. Yeah, we, we had the first ones, which um, we changed the uprights on. Um, we made some adjustments two or three times. We changed the colour, we went to the yellow to make the ivy's tops. But then... We've just uh, tweaked this one to what I think is obviously the best model that it's ever been. Um, the fundamental change is, is all based around this frame, which you're just going to show everybody now, aren't you? So Easy up, easy down, isn't it? Yeah, I fish it just, you know, for instance, I fish at Allcroft quite a lot. And um, one of the most important things for me that, is that. And some of the advantages that you get with a different frame that allows you more movability, I'm afraid then means that it can't sit flat. And if you just want to be shipping back because the bank's quite high behind you, you can do that. That's really important, you know, because you don't always have your roller like this, do you? No. Or you might have one like this on a sloping bank and then one like that. I, I fish so often where that is going to be so, this yeah, you sit, dead so right you, for you I sit quite low on your box. I sit low, yeah. Um, and obviously we're not the tallest people in the world, so sitting like, and you just drop in some people, because it depends yeah. how high the water is, yeah, of course uh, it is. off where you're fishing. Mm. If you're high off the water already, you want your roller right down on the floor, and that's a massive advantage, but as you've already said, one of the other most important things about that new frame is that it's got that sort of easy out, up and easy down, because yeah, it's there's split. There's no fiddling knobs, there's no button suppress. press. No, it literally just clicks in it. and it clicks out, that's right, and it's easy got little up. nodules in it, so that it just locks itself out, and it's just got a nice position, it's the right angle, and because it's um, clicking and you'll just see it clicks in, it sits against that frame. Because these feet actually create extensions, that gives the legs more stability, which is brilliant. We've got uh, spirit levels. Bucket hook. Yeah, bucket hook. I must point out that these uh, rollers, the, these have got bearings, and these bearings are stainless. Yep. So that obviously stops any kind of rusting, because we know for a fact that, I mean, last week it was biblical, weren't it? It didn't stop raining. What we and had, start, what was it called? Storm Babette? Storm Ridiculous, that's what I called it. It was like, I felt like I was going to be like Noah. <laughs> and I started building, still started building an ark, and the rollers went in two by two. And <laughs> you put your rollers away, wet through, and of course things start to rust. And that's obviously what happened. So stainless steel ball bearings in there. What this is just... the... 500 model Try which has this. extending legs but the 600 model has triple extending legs and it goes right proper high doesn't it yeah did we say 1.3 meters 1.3 yeah to conquer those annoying high banks yeah and, and sometimes people say well do you ever have it that high well it's I, not, not well, just the fact that, that you might have it at that height as you've got it there but more importantly you sometimes might have the back legs or the front legs whichever way you're looking yeah. at it um, you might have those high because the bank might be sloping really steeply, so you can reduce these on a sloping bank, or if you've got some steps, yep. there's places where you've got steps behind you, and you can then means you might only adjust one leg really long because it might drop off. So the 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 um, what's the word I'm looking for? The adjustability versatility is obviously as well, and versatility it? is yeah. massive. Yeah. So that's a brilliant uh, addition. Obviously, this has got double extending legs so that you can get it down lower. If you're a person that, obviously, like Joe, likes fish low, you can have it at this height or you can go right up to that one. And the most important thing to tell you is that despite the economic climate, despite rising costs around the world, somehow um, the brains behind the outfit, which is my brother, has managed to bring these in at the same price as they were last year, which is... $59.99 for this one, which is the 500, and $84.99 for the large. So 60 quid and 85 quid for these two rollers with all the features, and obviously the tried and tested pedigree that the Taurus rollers have got, I think is absolutely Absolute brilliant. Steel. And keeping them on track, because of course we've all got costs, and we know that people can't always afford um, massive prices. So they are absolutely spot on, and I'm really proud to say that uh, the new ones of these will be out Probably by the time this video goes out, Joe, they'll be, they'll be in out. the shops waiting for you to go and uh, so check them out. Try. So good luck with them, and hope you enjoy using them like I do. So, Mick, we've just had a bit of a 
sales pitch for the fans. Yeah, we. Um, it's time it's to do a bit of fishing again. It's not all play, Joe, is it? No. Have to do a bit of work now and again, don't we? I'm just going to be noisy and cut my worms up. I do apologise. Oh, that's on. And the fishing suddenly got really good, hasn't it? <laughs> I think we've got a bit of cloud and it, it was bright this morning, weren't it? And that uh, sun's gone in and I think it's just uh, give them a bit of cover and a bit of confidence. I like caught happened. a carp and a load of perch and one roach yeah. in two hours fishing. And then since we've been doing a bit of roller talk and just had a bit of fishing and you had a bit of lunch and that, caught another 15 roach and two skimmers. It's unbelievable, isn't it? It's incredible. I'm on these little F1s. You're on the F1 pod, aren't you? It was a nice... Uh, it is, look, here's another one. He was showing me, uh, Dave was showing me how small these were when they went in. And they were only fingerlings. And these are all like a pound and a pound plus. Oh, the curse of the camera. Brought myself some perch. Oh, you've not taught one of them, have you? Taught perch on. Fatal, lad, fatal. You've got worms on, you, haven't you? Hey? You've got worms on. Yeah, little tiny work little tiny worms head on. And it's uh it's working nice. Yeah, I'm still on the uh visual double white maggot. Which seems to have worked really well. Well what's noticeable is you're chucking much further out, aren't you? Yeah. Maybe them F1s are a bit further out perhaps or Yeah, I'm kinda of chucking into this bowl as it's called i suppose that's what i'm calling it open water when and i think they're quite like that when they're a bit spooky them f1s they, oh they love open water yeah yeah they'll just ball up at middle won't they i've had one while you were chatting to dave the owner that come off it was definitely an f1 but apart from that i've not really seen any here but no not to say there aren't any obviously no, i'm fishing like 30 meters yeah you're definitely fishing a decent chunk further than me aren't you so i, I, I find that skimmers and F1s, definitely like open water, Joe. I don't know what you think. Definitely. I just quite like the look of this. We've got that lily pad and it's the same depth wherever I chuck here. And to be fair, it's good fishing now. I just need to just have a little break. I am putting a few, few worms through, which is uh, definitely improving. I think you are as well, aren't you? Oh, that be on. That one nearly lost my rod again then, Joe. <laughs> Great fishing though, isn't it? Superb. It's uh, it's an absolute pleasure. So of course, what was next then, Mick? It was the European Feeder Cup. Yeah, I think I was just saying that um, we had, a, we had a winter league in between, uh, which I really enjoyed, fishing with lads at Barnsley. Um, I better get my finger out here and make sure this done went to them lilies. Concentrate on what you're doing, Michael. Um, there's some lilies underwater as well. Yep, for sure. What a prat, that's it. Got him. Oh, Joe. Making a right ash at him. Don't want to, don't want to uh, lose it like that perch. And then it was, um, yeah, the, the first ever European Feeder Cup, which is basically a new competition that we're hoping will develop uh, into eventually being the European Feeder Champs. So obviously we have a World Championships, but then as a second competition, it's European. Now, some people may argue that the World Champs is more of a European competition than it is a world competition, but we do have South Africa uh, who fish it, and obviously, although some of the countries are on the continent of Europe, they're not actually in the Euro like us. Um, but the European Championships is as much about getting a second competition as it is about the difference between the world and the Europeans. Yeah. 
it's just another opportunity to fish internationally around Europe in the style that we have to obviously stick to and the rules that are enforced upon us on a world championship. So this year, um, to get it started, Lee Kerry, along with the Angling Trust, basically came up with the competition which was last week at Barston, Barston Lakes. Um, so there were 10 teams of six. Now, the reason it's six is in a world championship, you have a squad of six with five to fish. But because this was more of a, if you like, friendly competition, we thought it was only fair that the guys traveling all the way across Europe from as far as Hungary, Czech Republic, you had Germany, Austria, uh, Lithuania, they're actually a UK best Lithuanian feeder team. Uh, we had three English teams. Um, we also had Belgium fishing in there and then a team from Ireland. So we had 60 pegs at Barston, two days practice, three days competition. Because that's an, obviously a unique thing as well, isn't it? Yeah. Three well, days match. Lee, um, Lee don't need practice because he's that good. But <laughs> like he said, there's nothing worse than travelling for two days practicing for three to fish a two-day match and then traveling home for two days, like we have to do sometimes when we go abroad. So he said, lads who've traveled a long way, surely they'd like to fish as much as possible in match condition. So I think that's fair, fair comment. Yeah. And two days practice because of the way that it was structured means that you were rotated on both banks should give people enough insight. And there's enough information and there's enough, I mean, even we've done Barston YouTube videos and we've not been doing this that long. There's enough information for people to understand what the fishing was. Because it was international rules, that simplifies the fishing because you're allowed to use a bit like what we're doing today, free running rigs, uh, minimum of 50 centimetre up lens, and the baits are then limited, so it's easy to say what's not allowed. No pellets, no artificial baits like bandoms and wafters. Um, so you're left with like hemp, corn, ground bait, worms, maggots, pinkies, casters, bloodworm and joker. Um, great competition, Barston, oh, we, it were in summer mode because as the country's been, it's been red hot. And then sure enough, two days before the competition, freezing cold, massive frost. Storm Babette. Storm Babette, yeah, there you <laughs> came. He raised his ugly head, didn't he? So it was white over on the first morning um, of the competition. You know, massive frost. And we thought, well, it hold up. It's a shallow venue. Uh, but trust me, it, it held up. And there were loads of fish caught in practice. We had two great days practice. We had two teams, which were uh, the Drennan England feeder team, Aqua, and Drennan England feeder team, Blue. Um, basically, the six-man squad, which is the international the world champ squad, was the Aqua team, and then we had Jamie Harrison and Rich Wilson who were part of the uh, bigger squad that come out onto the World Champs. And then we had some sort of new guys uh, onto the scene, which was Tom Norton, Max Stevens, uh, our own Sam Collett. Oh. So I'm just watching that. Great to see Sam having a... Is that on? Ooh. Uh, yeah, Sam had a great... Um, a great time and really enjoyed this himself. This is what we want, mate. Um, sorry, the uh, the other member was Oliver Scott on, one of our Barnsley teammates. And, That's a um, making it. Sorry, hey. Joe. Oh, he's a beauty. They're, they're the target audience, aren't they? They're the targets. Um, yeah, Oliver. Sam did had a great time. I think Sam won his section the first two days, and basically it were a carp, a uh, few F ones and then skimmers where you couldn't catch carp and F1s. Personally, my first day, I was on peg 116 at Barson, for those that know it, and I didn't particularly feel it were a great carp area. Uh, I was drilled between Michael Buckwalder fishing for Ireland and Max Stevens fishing for the Aqua Blue team. Not really what I wanted, two lads who knew the venue, and uh, we'd actually pulled, pulled our knowledge uh, between the Aqua and the Blue team. So all of a sudden I'm trapped between a lad I fished within the Super League uh, in Michael Buckwalder and then a lad that I'd practiced with all week, which is Max Stevens. 
you know, I wanted um, a couple of anglers fishing completely different styles to me. Um, either side of me, not somebody who we were going to share our fish. However, uh, Mac, and, Mac and I both caught a carp, and then um, I think Mac had an F1, and then we went skimmer in, and we both caught skimmers. Uh, Mac would, had a better day than I did. He caught a few F1s on his skimmer line. What did I finish up with? 19 kilos, and Mac had a brilliant 27 kilos, and he was second in section. He was never going to win the section because we were in with one, two, four peg, uh, which is historically brilliant. Um, and the lad on that at 60 kilos, Peter Classic from Czech Republic, and therefore stopped Mac from winning that section. I was fourth behind, there was another guy um, in the 120s who caught a few carp. But I beat everybody to my left. I was pleased to beat Michael because he's obviously a brilliant angler. Um, and, and a great day. We won the day. We had 16 points. Uh, the blue team was second on 23. Where's my uplands? Here they are. And um, yeah, it was superb. Day two, I didn't move very far. I moved um, one peg onto 117, which were max pegs from the day before. Completely different day, the conditions changed. Probably really important to mention that, that it had been a cold easterly in practice and leading up into day one. All of a sudden the wind changed, the temperature lifted by five degrees and I just knew it was going to be more carp and F1s. And sure enough, it was. Um, wind were blowing down the lake in a southerly direction, which then spread the fish out in the top half of the lake. I caught six carp, nine F1s, and a few bream. Never even had to go skimmer in. And I had 35 kilos, and I won the section. Now, one, two, four didn't win the section. That were Brenton Sweeney from Ireland. Now, in Brenton's defence, um, I think he's seen more barracuda than he's seen carp in his <laughs> life. And um, by his own admittance, probably didn't catch as much as he might have done had he been more experienced at carp fishing. So that allowed me to win my section, as opposed to probably coming second, which would have been the norm if an experienced carp angler had been on that peg. Uh, nonetheless, um, I felt like I fished a great match, learnt a bit from the day before, and we won the day again with 13 points. And that was great, so that put us in front, leading to day three. Day three was the day of Storm Babbitt. Yeah. And it rained all night, and it rained all morning. In fact, I jumped out of the van in the car park at six o'clock, and water running down car park went straight over my trainers without much water. <laughs> and um, as I drove down the lake, dropped Lee off on peg 110, I saw where the inlet comes in at 101, and I swear to you, it was, people say it was like Zambezi. It was oh, like the Zambezi. Shocking, wasn't it? I've never seen anything like it. And it coloured the water up. The lake come up four or five, excuse me, four or five inches during the day. I was down on peg 88, and top and bottom of it was, I had an awful day. Um, the conditions had changed, the fishing had changed, and where I was, there were no carp to be caught, no F1s to be caught, and after just winning your section and having fourth on day one of the team, having two fantastic results, all fishing the same way, which was particles, uh, long, you know, being patient, pinching big carp and F1s, it should have been um, more of a conservative approach for me. I probably should have fed Joker. I didn't feed Joker because I didn't think I needed it. And in hindsight, I did. The Lithuanian to me right fed all his Joker at the start, which is a limit of a quarter of a, a litre, um, which is basically like a big... Did you even take Joker? ..big pull cup. Um, don't ask me embarrassing questions I can't answer on, on film, Joe. Um, Mine was in the van. No, I mean, was it even part of the teams? <laughs> no, we, 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 we had it, we ordered it, because you never know. But we had... What did, how many sections wins did we have in the first two days? Yeah, Fishing yeah. Fishing completely mate. opposite way. And the way to catch skimmers was worms in ground bait, um, fishing quite aggressively. So we didn't feel we needed 
that pulling pattern, we actually thought joker would be a detriment because sometimes it can draw too many fish into your peg and on a silty venue like Barston, all it does is create fizzing and you can't catch them and it's not as efficient as what it would be fishing bigger baits like worms and maggots. Um, Lithuanian kid caught 72 skimmers. I'm not saying he pulled all my fish off me, but he certainly attracted quite a lot of them. Um, he weighed 16 kilos. I limped along to nine kilos. Um, once I'd gone out of control and lost the, the grip of the match in the first half, the second half of the match, the, our end of the lake was basically ruined by swathes of flood water coming down and big boils of clouds and muck, and, and that half the lake switched off. So I were already in trouble and nowhere to rescue it back. Um, a great, you know, sort of somebody I look up to, which is Attila Erdy, was on my left um, on peg 87. And he fished one line all day and he fished with Sticky Mag, which we had practiced, but it didn't seem right. And he caught um, 20 kilos of skimmers. I got absolutely buried. Uh, and of course, with the second half of the match, all I tried to do was climb back up the ladder trying to catch bream and maybe an f1 and a carp and and the, the harder i tried the worse it got and i didn't leave myself anywhere to go and were too far behind to claw it back so i had to then go for it which ultimately led me to nine kilos and i were actually the last in section fortunately top half above the river if you like we had rob won his section in peg 120 um, Lee won his section, sorry, uh, yeah, Lee won his section on, um, what peg were he on? 110. Adam were on the other side of the island from Lee. He, he won his section and Will Freeman were up on peg 12. And he said they were absolutely black with carp because I think the coloured water had pushed all the fish up to where he was because no inlets. He said and there were carp swimming around on top, it were great. And he did a great job. He caught quite a few on a long tail on drop and fished a brilliant match. And then Steve were on 49, I think. Um, we spoke to each other and I got word that we're across. He was struggling, I was struggling. But he managed to catch three big bream and, um, and he said he caught an F1 that he'd actually foul up for whatever. He got it out, that's the most important thing. And had a third. So we still finished up with 18 points, uh, 10 of which were mine. And um, I think we were third on the day because the Czech Republic scored a great score and I think Hungary won the day and um, that put them into third. We, uh, Czech Republic were second and we, we won. Um, so a great result, fantastic, really gutted for the blue team. They had a really tough day on the last day, the day that I'm talking about when I had my tough match. Rich Wilson was down on 82, um, sorry, telling you lies, he were on 84, 85 area on the on the grassy knoll. Uh, and he, he struggled knoll. for 14 kilos. Yeah, the grassy knoll. And then um, they had a few sort of tough results around the lake and that pushed them out of second into fourth. So they missed out on a medal and I'm devastated for them lads because they fished brilliantly all week. It, their, it was their first time fishing internationally, pulling on an England shirt, which has got its added pressures. And uh, But fair play to them. They were brilliant, worked hard, and we were all very proud of each other. Um, and we got, you know, England came away with um, the gold. And that were great. And that were last week. And then I've had a weekend off because I needed to recoup. Um, obviously, we've got some work to do. Winter's coming. I've got some great matches coming up through the winter. We've got the Feeder Masters Winter Pairs, which hopefully will um, still go ahead because we've some, as you have all had problems in this in, in, in the UK, lots and lots of rain, a few places are flooded, um, but I'm sure that water will recede and things will resume normally. So I'm looking forward to the Feeder Masters Winter Pairs, which is at Allcroft and also the teams of four at Allcroft. And I've got a few angling trust Silverfish matches, um, there were one this weekend coming up, but that's been cancelled due to floods. And then, um, yeah, that'll be just a nice, gentle winter, trying to fish locally and, and enjoying that, really. But what about yourself, Joe? What's your plans for the winter? I know you're coming on the winter pairs, aren't you? Yeah, I'm going to have a bit of a stand-in. 
Brilliant. For the one and only feeder, feeder master. Um, and to be honest, it's all sort of crept up on me, Mick, I'm not going to lie. Been quite busy, haven't we, recently, like feeder masters and feeder king and filming and all that. And uh, silverfish season's crept up on me, but yeah. I was sort of looking at, um, I was looking at my calendar last night and there's a few Wednesday ones coming up. I'm hoping to get a few tickets for. I put a few e emails about last night to try and get on a few. Yeah. Um, that's it really. There's a bit of this and a bit of that for the next few few weeks. Yeah, brilliant. Well, it's been um, been great to catch up again, hasn't it? Definitely. And the fishing, I've just, off while you were chatting, then I just caught two skimmers in two chucks just randomly again. Yeah, they don't seem to want to. I think it's because the fish are all up in up, the water. Up in the water. Well, I caught all them while we weren't filming. I caught a roach a chuck. Yeah. Well, I've not had a roach since we've been filming. Bizarre, isn't it? You get little swathes of fish coming through, Seems don't be, you? Yeah. I've got a perch again because that's every time. If I don't catch an F1, I catch a perch. Have you had a skimmer yet? No. No, no I'm just an F1 and perch angler, me, Joe. Well, they're way heavier than F1s, aren't they? They've been all right, they have. They've uh, they've pulled my string a bit. I'll tell you what they've done. They've been great. Tell you what actually helps, though, mate, when you've got an upbait on. I find it's a massive advantage to have upbait on, pal. Don't pal me, pal. Slide on, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. Nice little catch-up. We had a little teaser with the old Taurus rollers. Yeah, they're good. And then we're back into the office. Because winter's a great time. We've... Um, more product development because obviously 2024 we're hoping is going to be a great year for us and we obviously really appreciate all the support from people watching the videos and people who are going out there and buying the new fish products which is great we're hoping to keep that going and constantly improving so we'll get a bit of fishing in and we'll probably come back and have another gathering before Christmas yeah on a Mick and Joe's vlog uh, don't forget to subscribe and we'll uh, oh, tune in go... next time and see you soon. Am I going to go out on a fish? Absolutely. Oh, here we go, look. Hopefully it's not just a perch. It could be a perch, though. Don't. Don't go out on a perch, Joe. Could be a... Oh, I might have, might have talked myself into it. Oh, it is an all. Oh. Oh. But don't forget to like and subscribe. I think I've got a <laughs> perch on here, but I'm not going to strike. If you want some perch tips. I don't want to wind in. Have, have, you you two, have you caught two today at once or? No, I haven't. You've been a single fisherman, yeah. No, I'm, yeah. I'm, I've not managed that, that extraction. <laughs> Brilliant. So thanks everyone for watching. As Mick said, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next vlog, but before that, the next new fish video. Thanks everyone. I'm going to catch another perch. <laughs>